2020 has brought a lot of complications this year. Mistimings, delays or cancellations of certain events, recreational products, or just blatant no-shows. And of course, guess which slice of the internet is upset? Even though time and time again has proven that it's unlikely to do anything this year. Yeah. No thanks to the 60th Sega event and its reused material. Or what's ever lined up for next year. Too, too many times have I seen fans this year set themselves up expecting some form of anything solid when we are still in unsuitable conditions for it. And I'm frankly shocked that it's taken about three or four events by now for people to actually get it. Sega have proven many times that they're not exclusively Sonic oriented nor are they trying to tout him as a rivalry brand mascot against Nintendo anymore. Seriously, there's been about six collaboration games on top of the crossover DLC. So, what is the thought process behind thinking that they'll still try to beat Nintendo at their own game and do something completely out of the blue just like them? It's a losing battle at this stage in time, and has been for years at this point. The idea of a new game completely wowing people has been lost on them, because the idea of what Sonic should be to most has been soured. The idea is so diverse that it just can't be pinned down completely on one solid foundation, unlike other fan communities, which usually have a good grasp of what should come from a sequel. But when that sequel arrives, it's usually received okay with them. However, Sonic is the exception, and I really don't like that it is. New games only amplify the problem. Every single game of recent times has been flip-flopping wildly in the fan's eyes between loving it or hating it, which makes the fan community look like it's eating itself inside out, dividing into many, many subsections. Whenever this happens, it seems that the majority end up following those opinions, building them up and sticking by them like it's an emotional response to do so. But at the rate of which game is immediately good and which game is suddenly bad changes so greatly that by the time the next game comes out, trying to make good on what people didn't like back then is immediately scrutinized and then gets picked up sometime later? When this is taken into account with the time span of when a game is conceptualized all the way up to being developed to completion, it just becomes an endless game of cat and mouse, rendering it impossible to time correctly in the fans' eyes because, well, they're in some kind of endless restlessness. So you have to ask yourself, what are they meant to do from a general perspective? How do you try and please a good number of people? Sure, you can always go backwards and try to rediscover what worked then to satisfy a specific angle, but you run the risk of angering others who would trash the game and enforce the narrative of it being bad in their eyes, which therefore influences it in the public's eyes. You could also continue as you mean to go on and try to please everybody, but because of how many diverse styles there are, you'll have backed yourself into a corner and still have to face those who can't be appeased, pleasing absolutely nobody in return. Said styles have all grown into holding sizable communities as well, and then posing the risk of leaving the main fan base could equate to poorer sales. What are they honestly meant to do in such a weird scenario? It's as much as a publisher problem as it is a fan's. So with this in mind, we return to what the matter of the next game will be. And the answer is we simply don't know. I'm content with this. The specific angle of Sonic that I personally want is most likely going to stay wherever the hell it is in time. It'd be too risky for a company to do something like that for me, since it's obviously not going to appeal to everybody else. It became painfully clear to me after 2017 that Sega as a publisher were not going to try and push any devs to go for something that would interest me personally. They wouldn't know what I like, and neither would anybody else unless they directly asked me. Which is why I firmly believe that after all this time, self-indulgement is the way to go. Art, music, fan games, whatever sort of content you want to create, to curb that edge and settle off that restlessness. As a consumer, I've grown to understand that the output of Sonic's future titles may not be what I'm looking for. So as a consumer, I put myself to work and chose to add to the world, instead of asking something from it. It's why I've gotten so fed up with seeing fans continue to try and ask for something new, or argue for or against the same old points that have been beaten to dust at this point. It's helping nobody here. If you have the energy for that, surely you have the energy for committing to something else. At this time of recording, it's 2020. Make at least one person happy this year, which can just be yourself as far as I'm concerned. You count, so create. Indulge in what you want to see. Fill the spaces where others might not be able. Build it, and they will come. Because only God knows if they will build it for me or you. That new game, that new thing, will come eventually. 
Just don't expect the surprise until the surprise comes to you. That's all I've got. Thank you for watching. Sorry if this feels a bit misdirected or rude, I guess it's sort of a rant, I think. But this year has made me very, very tired of the same old song and dance. So, feel free to share this around, subscribe if you want. Still thinking about a Patreon though.